Our next presenter is Violet Lopez. Violet is a graduate student at UTD in creative writing and literary translation. She has a background in the visual arts and plans to teach art in middle or high school upon completion. A native Texan from a Cuban American family, she has been a member of this church since 2011. Here to give her presentation entitled Literary Translation and Creativity, the aha moment and why it doesn't really matter. Thank you. Wow, okay, so I have a few acts to follow. Um, when I heard about the opportunity to talk to you all about creativity, I felt obligated to speak on my experience, given that art is based. I want to talk to you about a project I did that was inspired by the act of translating poetry. But also, I do want to make the point that the aha moment is not the most important when it comes to creativity. The reason I say that the aha moment or the moment of inspiration is not that important is because what really matters is what you do with the moment of inspiration. Literary translation is a good example of not being able to rely on a moment of inspiration because it's really hard work. To get to my example, I was translating my first poem from Spanish to English. There was a discussion in one of my classes by people with no background in translation where they had expressed feelings of betrayal about a translation of Rilke's poem, The Panther by Robert Bly. Bly had translated the literal word thousands to hundred thousands, and some readers had felt betrayed by this. I began to think about the different factors a translator has to consider. There are different theories of translation, and I won't go into them, but a contemporary and accepted theory of translation is illustrated well by a quote from John Felstener, a professor emeritus of English at Stanford, when he says, translating a poem often feels essentially like the primary act of writing, of carrying some pre-verbal sensation or emotion of thought over into words. And that's from his book, Translating Neruda. I hadn't yet studied translation theory, so it turns out that the first translation I did are quite bad, but we don't have to go there. <laughs> While I was translating these poems, probably because I knew the translations weren't good enough to stand alone, I wanted to make them into an interdisciplinary project. I wanted to create an object that the readers of the translations would interact with that would reveal something about the act of translation so they could see with their own eyes all the considerations a translator has to take into account and perhaps not feel betrayed by a decision that a translator might make. So that was my initial aha moment. I decided to make the translations into a single codex, and a codex is a fancy word for a book. Um, and before I address them by name, this is an example of a trot. This is how translation of poetry is generally done with the original words underlined and the word options for English underneath. My plan was to print the original Spanish poem on opaque paper, print the trots on transparent vellum and the final, transparent, final translation on vellum, binding the book so that each piece would be layered over the other. This was so the reader could see the translation but also see the original and the trots to give them a hint as to what all of that is involved in a translation, and to give them some control over their experience. They could choose their own words or phrasing if they disagreed with my choice. I could have taken it a step further and included the scans of the poem. This is an example of a scan where the translator marks up the original, indicating rhythm, line length, rhyme, etc. But the project didn't go that way. I decided that pasting the layers together would more realistically mimic the reading of a translation because the reader sees the translation first. Because in reading a translation, you wouldn't see the actual trots. But by seeing the suggestion of trots through the pasted vellum, it's more like the actual reading of a translation because the work of the translator is only suggested in a translation, it's not explicit. The fact that the final piece is somewhat transparent the act of putting the vellum up to the light to see the trots more clearly is also more reflective of the action of a person who's consciously looking for the work of a translator. 
This project may have started out with an aha moment, but the final didn't turn out anything like the original moment of inspiration. If I hadn't sat down to do the work, I never would have realized that the initial idea was flawed and that it wouldn't really communicate what I wanted to get across to the viewer. So my point, the moment of inspiration is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to creativity. The real substance of creativity is the work. Another pleasant side effect of working in your creativity is that the act of making or of acting on the aha moment creates a cascade of aha moments. You start to spark off more ideas that keep sparking more ideas that start to flow and can lead you to a totally unforeseen project or actual physical destination, as happens in some of the talks tonight. Not only does acting on a creative inspiration create a cascade of creative inspiration, it actually makes our minds more practiced at having creative impulses. The more we act on our creative impulses, the more our gears are oiled, we don't feel rusty, we can jump right in, we feel skilled, and we're able to be productive quicker. So the main difference between any prolific artist and the rest of us is not necessarily some God-given talent they possess that we do not. What usually separates prolific artists from the rest of us, and I have this printed in 26-point font, <laughs> is work ethic their relentless pursuit after excellence in whatever field they're working in, which I'm sure many of you understand. So I chose to present on this aspect of creativity to serve as encouragement for all of us to act on our creative impulses, because what makes some more creative and others less is not usually some intrinsic quality or lack of it. It's how much we practice at it. This is what the final ended up looking like, and I have it here. It was requested that I read the translation. Remember, this was my first translation, so don't expect magic. Um, this is a translation from a poem by Vicente Alexandre called Dueve, or It Rains. This afternoon it rains. It rains only your image. In my memory, the day opens. You go in. I don't hear. The memory gives me only your image. Only your kiss or rain falls in remembrance. It rains your voice and rains the sad kiss, the deep kiss, the kiss wet with rain. The lips are moist, moist with memory, the kiss wails from some gray, frail heavens. Your love rains wetting my memory and falls and falls. The kiss drops to the depths and the gray rain still falls. And here's my final slide with some resources. Thank you.